Nyazi exposer nina. Nyazi exposer ene yazi ni angna daba. Ngazi ngazi faga. Yo ngazi ngazi faga yazi. Okay. It's gotten me in situations where I've really, really hated being there and had no one to blame but myself. So I will then revert a lot of the time to saving situations or fixing situations, even situations that might not be healthy for me. But I'll do it anyway because I feel like, well, what is there to life? Doesn't even matter, bro. Like people don't even go here, bro. A minute in, I was already overly critically thinking about why are you seated that way? Why does your leg look like it's sitting like that, bro? If you guys haven't picked that up already. <laughs> that one was a heavy one. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. I've just taken a break. As you watch this, I have been on a little bit of a two week, one week, two week break, and I am back, okay? I needed it done. Anyway, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over and over again. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much to all the members if you are a member. Listen, we are trying to get to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's proving quite difficult, but I know because of you, we can make it happen. Always do reshare, repost the videos, like the videos, subscribe to the channel. It goes a really, really long way in which it helps the channel grow. Thank you so much for being here as always. Today, I'm doing really, really exciting videos and I'm doing something slightly different. I am going to be doing a two part series starting with this one. This one is going to be called Candidly Real, okay? Because let's be honest, on this channel, we are honest, we take out our stories, we share our engagements, we share all the things that happen. I am going to be here today I am here today to share some of my toxic traits. And let me tell you why I am doing that, because I'll be filming a Candid with Cat after this, where I'm going to be sharing some toxic traits that I don't like in others and sharing some of your toxic traits. But be before we get into third, I'm going to share some of mine. So I, I, I will just be honest, here we share. Here it's an open book and we share some of our faults, some of our mishaps, some of our unhealthy patterns of behavior. And I'm going to start with exposing myself. I'm going to start with exposing myself. So this is going to be called Candidly Real because it's going to be a mix of Candid with Cat and Real Talk. And this time we're doing real talk first. So yeah, if you want to see some of my toxic traits, some of the things that I do that I'm guilty of doing, then do keep watching. Let's All right, so as you know, I'm a social media content creator. So I am on social media a lot. I am either watching, consuming social media, or I am doing creating content, right? So one of the things that I come across a lot is watching people share some of their toxic traits, but also even with them not really sharing their toxic traits, I can tell that mm, that's a little bit toxic, girl. Now get yourself together. What is going on, Masabata? But for me, I, I, I was just like, okay, you know what? Let me share some of my toxic traits. Some of the things that over the years I have been guilty of doing. Yes, I'm working on some of them. Toxic traits are typically described as unhealthy patterns of behavior that may become somewhat harmful to yourself or to others. So, Nyaz exposer Nina. Nyaz exposer and as in Angnandaba. Angnandaba, because I'm actively working on, on these toxic traits and getting rid of them. So, Fukuk. Okay. 
So the first toxic trait is something that I've spoken about on my channel quite a lot and I've shared candidly with you guys is people pleasing. So this is something that I've worked on over the years. It's definitely become better over the years, but I have a very serious tendency to people please. Sometimes when I want to say no, I don't say no. Sometimes when I'm left with my last, your last hundred rand. You know, when I'm left, left with my last hundred bucks, I will give it to somebody who is in need. I will put myself in situations where I'm uncomfortable or put myself in situations where I end up having to make difficult decisions or get stranded or be in a position where I didn't really have to be in that position or for the sake of making somebody else happy. <laughs> Hi. I'm very, very big on people pleasing. And as I say, I have worked on it. It's become better over the years, but let me tell you for free that it is something that I still currently really, really struggle with and I'm working on it. Okay. There's moments where I'm just like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Bona, I, I, I hear your chats. Hey, I hear your chats, but we're not doing that today. Okay, we're not doing that today. So people pleasing is one of the things that I just grew up with. And I think it, it came with the fact that one, I'm a firstborn daughter. So one of the things that I would always have to do is just make sure that I do right by the elders. I do right by siblings. I do right by friends. And it's gotten me in situations where I've really, really hated being there and had no one to blame but myself. Yes. <laughs> Got the exposure today. It is fine. It is fine. It is fine. The next one is definitely the fixer or the savior complex. This is a very big toxic trait of mine. I like to be liked. Okay. Not so much anymore. Like I say, a lot of these things are things that I've been working on over the years. And right now I'm at that place where, listen, if you don't like me, it is what it is. But with certain people and certain, uh, my close circle, I really like to be perceived in a very positive way. Why? So I'll end up doing things and coming through at the last minute when somebody needs me, even in moments where I do not need to do so. So typically I'll come in with the savior complex. If somebody needs me, if they need money, if they need assistance, if I need to get into the car at two o'clock in the morning, when really Linda, when really at that point, it's not even necessary for me to go into the car, like sort yourself out. Okay. We're grown ups at this stage. You shouldn't be, uh, putting me in a position where I'm in danger or anything like that all for the sake of sorting your own self out. You know what I'm saying? So one of the things that I really struggle with is that savior fixer complex where I feel like I need to save something or I need to fix something. It's really, really unhealthy. And I know that it... Even just saying it gives me butterflies because I feel like got the exposure, man. You understand? Like you feel like I got the exposure and I don't like it. I don't like it, but it's true. One of the things that I like to do is save or fix situations. And I put so much pressure on myself to save or fix a situation, even when a situation doesn't need any fixing or saving. And I feel like, again, when you look at it from a therapy perspective and what I've learned over the years is that it's something that's really selfish to do. It's actually, I would, uh, I hate to use this word, but it, it's also part of a narcissistic trait because why is it that you feel like you constantly have to, you know, save the day or um, be perceived in a really positive light as somebody who constantly fix, fixes or saves situations? It's quite, it's not as bad, but it does come off as quite narcissistic. <laughs> if I feel like, okay, I, I, I need to figure this out. I will literally rack my brain trying to figure out how to fix a situation or come in as Superman, as a savior. And it's not cute. 
don't do that. Don't be me. Okay. I don't do it much anymore, but we're honest here. This is an open book. We're honest here. Let's, let's share. Let's talk about it. Right. I really, another big thing is I self-sabotage a lot, a lot. I will put myself in situations that are extremely unhealthy and it'll be an unhealthy pattern of behavior. As I say, I'll always put in that disclaimer that I am so much better than I was five, even 10 years ago. I have learned over the years that I don't need to be doing this to myself. But if I find myself in situations where I am under pressure or where I'm overwhelmed or where I am really hurt, down, sad, depressed, I will engage in patterns of behavior that are not healthy and that I shouldn't be engaging in. Oh, I'm so tired, yeah. I would, I'm so tired, I'm really tired. And one of the things that I will definitely admit is that if I'm in a place where I am sad, down, depressed, that kind of thing, I will definitely engage in patterns of unhealthy living. So I will dive into unhealthy food practices. I'll eat really bad food or I will do that a little bit too much, knowing very well that I shouldn't be doing that, but it's a way of masking something that is deeper, that's more internal, that's more, I'm trying to run away from it. So I will engage in self-sabotaging behavior. I will go out a lot more than I really want to. I'll, in, I'll put myself in situations that I shouldn't be in. I don't have to be in. I really don't have to be in, but I'll do it anyway because I feel like, well, what is there to life? Doesn't even matter, bro. Like people don't even go here, bro. What I must do. Like I feel that way. I and and um, as much as it's gone better over the years, and I've really learned whew, through therapy. To, listen to me exposing myself. You guys must be having a field day with me right now. Um, I will engage in patterns of really self-sabotaging behavior um, and a victim mentality as well. So a lot of the time when I engage in the self-sabotaging behavior, what will largely follow after that is a victim mentality as well. Very, very unhealthy, very, very selfish as well on my part. But the only difference now is I know when I start behaving that way. And once that behavior starts to come through, once that behavior starts to pop out, then I make it a point to cut it. Cut it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I just... I just know that ah, this is not the way I should be behaving and I cut it right there and then. Uh, another big thing that is a really unhealthy toxic trait and I do think this is truly unhealthy is overthinking. I will overthink myself into a depressed state. I will overthink myself into a panicked state. I will overthink myself into an overwhelmed state. I will overthink myself into a really difficult and sad and, and really just hard place where I end up engaging in very unhealthy behaviors. Why? Because I'm overthinking something. So it might be work. It might be uh, a relationship that I have with my friend, if I have gone and if I've had a fight with my sister, I will literally overthink it for days on end, sometimes even months on end. And I know that this is something a lot of introverts do. It's not just unique to introverts, but a lot of introverts find themselves in positions where they are overthinking everything. I will overthink everything from what I wear for a certain event are the shoes okay? Is the stress okay? You know what I'm saying? Is my makeup okay? Does my face, I mean, there's a video that I filmed weeks and weeks ago where the whole video, I was just looking at my lash thinking, man, this lash is making me look like, you know, my eye is sleepy or something like that. And I overthought that little thing the whole day. 
and the day after. So much so that I pulled out my laptop that very same day after recording to actually put in and check and have a look at it. And I thought, oh, okay, it's not that bad. But I overthought this whole thing the whole afternoon. If I go into a fight with a good friend of mine, if I have a disagreement with Prudence, if I have a disagreement with Naledi, I am overthinking that to death. I go to bed thinking about it. I wake up thinking about it. I will even call my friend or my sister, dependent on who the disagreement is with, and I will call them and I will vent for literally an hour or two on the phone. I am an overthinker. I analyze absolutely everything. I ah, overly critical and overly judgmental. They will, you can sit here. Wanguka, Dipuo, Linda, Masavata, Sentia, all of y'all, you can sit here and judge me right now. You can judge how I'm dressed. You can judge my makeup. You can judge how I look. Trust you me, you will not even get a smidgen of how much I'm currently judging myself right now. When I look at the video, when I, when I look at the quality, when I listen to the sound, all of this, there is no one who criticizes and judges me more than I judge myself. I am overthinking how people see me, how people perceive me, how I sound. When I was doing the Momentum campaign, I was sitting interviewing, I mean, I interviewed a neurosurgeon, I interviewed the head of a huge department in a big company, let me tell you, I couldn't even watch those video clips back. I couldn't. I couldn't because a minute in, I was already overly critically thinking about why are you seated that way? Why does your leg look like it's sitting like that, bro? What, what, what did you mean in that question? Your sentence construction is terrible, bruh. <laughs> me i will criticize and judge myself daily and and yes it's become better and i will say that it's become better but also at the same time i am human so one of the things that it's very hard to let go of certain habits and traits and patterns of behavior overnight so as much as i can absolutely say that it's gotten better I can also say that it's something that I still do to this day. Another toxic trait of mine, and I genuinely do feel that this is a toxic trait of mine. I don't like people. I don't like people. I like engaging when I'm in a certain space and somebody says, hi, Kateo, hey, whatever. That's fine. I can do that. As long as it's like one or two people, it's fine. But I don't like people. That's why you'll never really catch me in a fest, a, a, a concert or a festival or whatever. I don't like it. Yo, and yes, the sound. And yes, I'm the phone, yes. And I don't mean this in a mean or condescending way or a way in which. Um, it feels like I feel like I'm holier than thou. No, absolutely not. I genuinely don't mean it in that way. I just like my small circle. I like my small circle of friends. I like my friends, my family, my partner, my this. That's, that's it. That's where, that's how I'm rolling. That's, that's what I like. That is what makes me comfortable. And genuinely, it's because I think it's genuinely because I struggle a lot around people, right? I get overly stimulated, conversations overly stimulate me and I feel drained and um, drained of my energy. I just don't want to talk anymore, that kind of thing. That's why I'm an introvert, hello, you know? But I feel overly stimulated. I struggle to be in good, big groups because I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot going on at the same time. And because of that, I just genuinely don't like being around people. That's why you'll find a lot of the content that I shoot, I'm shooting it at home 
and if i shoot when i'm out and about it's very small clips here and there i don't like drawing attention to myself because i don't like it on me i, I just don't like it and 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 i don't like having to be in spaces where i engage with people i don't like it if i can do engagements one on one yes but if i have to and this is definitely outside of work if i have to work listen i will bring myself to the party and you know what i mean do you know what i mean and it leads me to my next point if i need to work if i need to coach if i need to speak somewhere if i need to do listen i'm ready for it am i fearful out of my mind absolutely i am but am i going to do the work yes and you know why this is my next toxic trait perfectionist i'm a huge perfectionist if you guys haven't picked that up already eh if you haven't picked it up already i am a huge perfectionist i everything that i do how i look how i work the amount of work that i put into something or someone or relationships friendships whatever i am a huge huge perfectionist and a lot of the time it's a toxic trait because a lot of the times it's to my detriment it's to my downfall right when i'm shooting content i'm looking at what's in the background i'll never just shoot meanwhile there's a pile of clothes over there or dishes on the kitchen counter or whatever i will never i <laughs> you got to hear me out okay you have to hear me out I'm such a huge perfectionist and everybody who knows me will attest to that. I like things done a certain way. I like to see things, you know, in my mind's eye, I see things done a certain way. And if they are not, and if I get to a place where I'm being asked to correct this, change this in the work environment, if I'm being asked to correct this, change this, 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 amend this, and I have to do it more than 2, 3 times, I'm 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 besides myself. I'm besides myself. I'm thinking to myself, why why can't you get this? This is simple. And for me, I could not understand why can't I get it? I'm such a perfectionist that I don't understand. I feel like for me, I need to get it the first time around. Simple. You need to get it the first time around. Move it along. Get it done right the first time around. I like a certain perfectionism about my friendships right i want to come across people pleasing i want to come across as a great friend so i will do everything in my power to do that so that my friends feel like i'm a great friend i want to come across as a great partner i will do everything in my power to come across as a great partner am i normal am i human do i get mad and and things and shout and scream yeah i do but i want to then you know i want to become unforgettable why that's what you are anyway this is how i want to come across and it's 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 a huge toxic trait of mine have i become better yes i've learned over the years that you can't make everybody happy and that's okay and some things you just got to let them go you know but when it comes to things like work and and the people that i care about i will do everything in my power to be perfect or do things perfectly it's terrible i know it's terrible a big toxic trait as well i choose to see the good in people and i often let that take over the bad in people So I will do everything in my power. I care so much about people that even when they hurt me, even when they they treat me badly, even when they uh talk down, speak ill of me, blah blah blah, I will actually try to find a way to make it make sense to me in my head that why would they say that? Is there something that I'm doing? 
Could you imagine? Ah, what a far number. Ah, eh. Oh, what? It's so. I I even feel. Okay, why am I getting emotional? I even feel sad for myself that I will try and find the fault in me as to why somebody would treat me badly. What is it that I have to, I can't believe, I, I, I will try and find the fault in myself as to what could I have done better? What did I do for someone to treat me that way? Even when I've done nothing, even when I've done absolutely nothing, I care so much about people that I will always look at the positive. I can't even look at the camera screen directly because it, it's this, this particular topic makes me so upset. Um, I will choose to look at the good and let the good outweigh the bad in them. And I don't know why. Even in moments where they treat me badly, where they disrespect me, where they hurt me, where they speak down to me, where they whatever, I will then ask myself, what is it that I did? What did I say something? How everything has a ripple effect and I do all those things thinking to myself that why? Maybe there's something that I did. Maybe there's something. And I'm just like, girl, no. But I'm working through that with therapy. I am. I'm working through that and I've become better um, because I've noticed with how I have responded to certain things that have happened recently in my life where I've just been like, <laughs> got it. You're absolutely not. No. Nope. And I now start to see the toxic traits in others. And I start to see the bad behavior in others, the patterns of behavior in others. And I, I do not stand for it anymore. So now I'm at this place where I'm just like, I'm standing on business, especially when I know that I didn't do anything to you. I did not do anything to you. I'm quite comfortable with severing ties and cutting everything and not feeling like I'm to blame for it. Whoo! That one was a heavy one. So if you are like me and you're an open book and you want to share some of your toxic traits, what are your toxic traits? I know you did share some in the community tab, but this is an open space. This is a safe zone. Share with me what some of your toxic traits are. I would love to know. The best part is I'm getting into Candid with Cat now. So we're getting candidly real. Part two was Candid with Cat, and I cannot wait to share some of the things that people have said and judge you. Yes, because I will judge you. I'm a judge, Amina. I will judge you much like you're judging me right now. And it's okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Candidly real, I shared some of my toxic traits. What are some of yours? As always, thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. If you did like this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, join the JK family. If you care to be in the membership space, I really would love it for you to join us over there. I'm going to be doing some rather personal videos to me in the membership space, but uh, we'd love to see you over there. We've got some fun videos going down over there as well. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for choosing me over and over again. Let's get the channel to 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I would so appreciate it. Don't leave. Don't leave. Okay, let me go. Until the next video, I'll see you very, very soon. Until then, mwah. sayonara.